In 2009, China was intrigued by a bizarre case. Six men were found hung on different dates after performing a risky sadomasochistic play. The oddities of the case pointed to one man who had been posting applications seeking partners who were willing to satisfy his absurd desires. Today, we will take a look at Zhou Youping, the karaoke strangler. Zhou Youping was born in the small town of Xiangxiang in 1973 as the second child of three siblings and grew up in a very modest earthen house. Not much was known about the family except that they had good manners and social standing. The father was said to be a good singer. His talent was passed down to Zhou, who also took an interest in singing. Villagers recall that Zhou was handsome and charming. Girls loved to be around him. He was also smart, making him the top of his class. Many people thought he would pursue a more pretentious career. He chose to follow his passion and enrolled in an art school in Hunan in 1989. He focused his studies on vocal voice and joined a troupe called the Huagu Opera Troupe at only 16 years old. Life seemed to be perfect for Joe, but he struggled with his sexuality and he realized that he was more interested in men. He was reluctant, however, to admit it outright, admit fears of being shunned and disowned by his family. One of his friends recalled Joe saying that he would be happy if he could fall in love with a girl and live a normal life. Joe was apparently made fun of because of his feminine demeanor and docile personality. But he continued to live his life as if everything was normal, focusing on his career as the leading singer of the opera troupe. Joe also sang at karaoke halls across Xiangxiang and Changsha under the stage name Dai Jun. He gained popularity for his voice and good looks. Zhou was said to live lavishly and bring home men that he considered his boyfriends. His father passed away in 1994 after being beaten to death by several people for unknown reasons. The sudden loss took a toll on the family. Zhou's eldest brother took it upon himself to help the family with its financial needs, but it was impossible for Zhou to continue his art studies. And so, he dropped out and followed his sister to Changsha. He continued his singing career at karaoke halls in Changsha. But he became consumed by greed. In June 2006, Joe invited a man to spend the night with him at a hotel. He drugged the man, which knocked him out. He stole the man's mobile phone and 600 yuan and fled. Coincidentally, they ran into each other and got into an argument. Joe was dragged to the Kaifu District Public Security Bureau. The police examined Joe and looked through his belongings. They found pills, and all of them were confirmed to be sedatives and hypnotics. Joe was then sentenced to three years in prison and fined 5,000 yuan. He was released in early 2008. Joe quit his singing career and disappeared from the spotlight. He rented an apartment in the Huxiang Cultural Art Market area in September 2009. Around this time, Joe witnessed a man hang himself. This experience altered something in Joe's mind. He started looking for men on online forums to be role-play partners or slaves. He said in posts that he wanted men between the ages of 23 and 40 who were willing to engage in erotic asphyxiation, whereby one cuts off the supply of oxygen to the brain to increase sexual pleasure. He said he would pay whoever was willing to take the offer up. He received many messages, but selected only six of them. He then arranged separate meetings with the men at various hotels in Changsha. Zhou's first victim was a man from Gansu province named Feng Yu. They met on October 11, 2009. 
Feng Yu requested a payment of 5,780 yuan for the act, and Zhou agreed. Both of them booked a room in one of Kaifu's guest houses. Zhu disclosed to Feng Yu the rule that he would cut the oxygen for 10 seconds before releasing it, and Feng was to be the one who did it first. Feng agreed and started to prepare the rope and himself. But while Feng was getting ready, Zhou discovered a positive HIV test in Feng's belongings. Feeling scammed, Zhou started to get angry but didn't show it. When Feng wrapped the noose around his neck and hung himself, Zhou simply watched. He ignored signals from Feng that he had enough and left the room. Feng Yu ended up hanging himself to death in that room. Zhou moved on to the next victim and met him at a guest house in Changsha on October 23rd. It's unclear what transpired that day, but the man was also left hanging. Zhou continued his sick murder spree with the same modus operandi. Despite saying that he would pay his slaves, Zhou reportedly later admitted that he never planned to give them anything and only sought pleasure out of it. His third victim was found hung naked on November 4th in a room at a hostel in Huxiang. Eleven days after that, another man was found hung at a guest house on Xiangchun Road on November 15th. It is said Zhou killed two others between October 11th and November 26th of the same year, according to various sources. All of the victims are said to have had the same experiences. They met Zhou and wrapped the noose around their own necks. Zhou didn't take part in the acts himself, but talked with the man as he watched. They apparently flailed in agony, and Zhou just watched in pleasure. They likely agreed upon safe words or signals for when they reached their limit, but Zhou likely ignored them and left, leaving the men to die. Two other men ran away from the meetings after they sensed something odd. Police started to see a connection among the six deaths as they died in the same manner. Authorities looked into the spaces the bodies were found and had a difficult time because Zhou had booked the rooms under pseudonyms. They then looked at the backgrounds of the victims and found they all planned to meet with Zhou. Police apprehended him on November 28th. Zhou apparently didn't fight back and confessed to his crimes. The case garnered a lot of attention online. Reporters from Changsha News looked through his social media. It seemed as though he had removed many friends and only left nine. The only email Zhou had was linked to a gay chatroom network. One of those friends who had the username Wu Bao said he had seen around 10 different men with Zhou during the time he knew him. Wu Bao recounted that his friend wasn't the type to drink alcohol, smoke, or engage in manly gatherings, but was more interested in shopping and staring at passing handsome men. He recalled that Zhou slowly grew distant from his friends and wouldn't hang out with them anymore, regardless of his friend's attempts to invite him. After a year of detention, there was a trial where Zhou was found guilty of six murders. During the trial, Zhou denied that he wanted to kill the men he met. He explained that the victims were well aware of the risk, brought their own ropes, and put the noose on themselves. He called it a game gone wrong. He said he was never interested in his victims and he was simply seeking pleasure. Despite attempts to prove his innocence, on March 29, 2011, the Changsha Intermediate People's Court sentenced Zhou to death in the first instance for the crime of intentional homicide. He appealed, saying the victims hung themselves voluntarily and he didn't intend to kill them. The Hunan High Court struggled to convict Zhou for four of the deaths due to a lack of evidence, but upheld the ruling for the other two victims. 
The Hunan High Court then reported to the Supreme People's Court for approval in accordance with the law. The appeal didn't end in Zhou's favor. The Supreme Court later upheld Zhou's sentence and approved his death sentence on August 29, 2011. The court issued an order to the Changsha Intermediate People's Court for execution. Zhou was on death row for three years before he was executed on August 29, 2014. The execution method was undisclosed, but some sources claim it was by lethal injection. Zhou was remembered by the media and most of China's population as a disturbed man. But to his family, he was remembered as a good man. His little niece at the time recalled that Zhou was a gentle uncle. Zhou's mother refused to talk to reporters as her heart still ached whenever she thought of her son. It was a pain only mothers could understand after seeing their son bullied as a child, turned into a criminal, and sentenced to death. In her eyes, Zhou was falsely accused and unjustly punished. Zhou's cousin, Zhou Li, thought the same thing. For Zhou Li, there was no way Zhou could have murdered people for his own pleasure. Were the deaths really accidental? And was Zhou too afraid to contact the police out of shame? Or was he a wolf in sheep's clothing all along? That's all for today. Thanks for watching.